What's going on summoners? My name is Crumbs and in this video I'll give you a quick rundown of the upcoming changes for patch 12.13. If you're curious about what's to come or want to get a head start and begin practicing to rank up next patch, look no further. I'll make a quick disclaimer that these changes can be adjusted by the time the patch rolls around, but historically we see all or nearly all of these changes make it through. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this and let's get started. First off, let's run through the system changes. We have a buff coming up for lethality items. Now, while Riot's goal with these last few patches was to lower the agency of assassins and weaken burst damage, they were hit a bit too hard. Gradually, they're receiving buffs to give them some more viable builds, especially since many assassins have opted into building bruiser builds to adapt. Now, onto the actual change. Duskblade, Prowler's Claw, and Eclipse will have a new mythic bonus stat added. 5 Movement Speed With some of their excessive damage out of the way, there's room for some added utility, and assassins are receiving extra mobility to help them maneuver their way around tricky fights. To clarify, these items will provide 5 extra movement speed for each legendary item completed. One precautionary adjustment being made is that Eclipse's ranged damage proc will have its damage halved. Again, this is supposed to mainly help assassins and not accidentally make lethality marksmen broken again. One more system change to cover is for Divine Sunder. It's having its passive effect damage adjusted. It'll scale less with max health, but include a base AD ratio, essentially retaining the effect that its component sheen provides. Also, the healing will be adjusted from 6 and 3% to 65% of pre-mitigation damage. It is certain that the meta will continue to evolve, especially with the compensation buffs assassins are receiving moving forward, so make sure to contact the coach at ProGuides.com if you want to be prepared for what's to come. We have experts who specialize in all champions and roles, so check them out. That's it for system changes, so let's hop into the champion balance next, and like always, we'll start with the top lane. First on the list is Renekton. He's up for a buff moving forward and it's a big one. His ultimate will now have some scaling introduced. It'll now scale with 10% of his bonus attack damage. This definitely helps out Bruiser Renekton more than Assassin Renekton. Since his ultimate deals damage over time, he'll need some defensive stats to get the maximum damage out of this new change. While Assassin Renekton might be able to get a few ticks off of it, the buff is minimal in comparison. Personally, I think this change is pretty big, even in the early game. If he's running Conqueror, it'll add a decent amount of damage to his full combo and also help him stay relevant towards the later parts of the game. Next up, Kled is getting some buffs. Like Renekton, he hasn't been performing too well in spite of the fact that he's practically designed to dominate solo queue. Thus, he's up to receive some additional damage buffs to assist him. His Q's bonus AD ratio will be increased by 5% on each hit, while his W's cooldown will be lowered. These are solid buffs for all parts of the game, and our analysts will keep an eye on both these top laners to see how far they take these buffs. And finally, we have adjustments coming up for Gwen. Overall, these adjustments do feel like buffs, but let me give you a rundown. Her passive health regen, Q damage, E damage, E bonus range, and ultimate damage will be increased. However, her Q center snip true damage will be reduced and the ability will deal less damage to minions. It will, however, do bonus damage to lower health minions. Overall, this weakens her pushing power. She's also going to have her W's duration reduced while her E's cooldown refund will scale with ability rank. These changes ultimately help her scale more effectively and also make her stronger in direct combat. The trade-off is that she loses some utility from her W and loses some mobility and ability to manage minion waves. Ultimately, I don't expect the top lane meta to change much because of these adjustments, but it'll at least help three weaker champions stand a fighting chance against some rather oppressive enemies. And that's it for the top lane, so next, let's run through the jungle changes. The first change we'll cover in the jungle is for Volibear. He's got a number of changes, starting with nerfs to his Q's movement speed bonus, Q base damage, and W bonus HP ratio. In addition, his W's base damage will be reduced by 5 at all ranks, his E's max HP damage will be reduced, and the E non-champion damage cap is going to be reduced. He'll suffer from reduced clear speeds and weaker ganks as a result, but most players would probably say these changes are justified. 
As he currently holds a 54% win rate in the jungle, something had to be done and hurting junglers clear times has historically been an effective way of keeping them in check. Time will tell if the nerf bat hit him a bit too hard. Moving forward, we do have a bunch of jungle buffs to cover as well, starting out with Elise. Her base HP, health, growth, starting armor, and human form Q damage are all going up. Early game junglers aren't performing as well as they were some patches ago, and Elise is no exception. With these changes, she should be a bit better at diving turrets, as well as taking extremely early fights and skirmishes. We also have buffs for Evelyn, as it seems like Riot wants to buff a ton of AP junglers this patch. In Evelyn's case, she's set to receive increased healing on her passive, more magic resist shred on her W, and her ultimate will set her passive to a 1.25 second cooldown. These are solid buffs, especially the buff to her W, as it'll help bring her burst damage closer to where it was prior to the durability adjustments buffs to her passive, and allowing her to access it more quickly after ulting will reward players for effectively getting in and out of fights. I am not looking forward to facing a stronger Evelyn, but Riot wants it, so you're gonna have to deal with it. AP jungler buffs aren't complete without some for Karthus. Okay, now I'm kinda losing it. Who decided these? In his case, however, Riot is at least taking it slow. He's going to receive increased base armor and health scaling. While this will obviously help him scale, his clear speed remains the same and he won't snowball much harder than he already does. Let's talk about Talia next. She's up for many changes. Her Q's damage will be increased and mana cost lowered, but the bonus damage to monsters will be decreased as well. In terms of clear speed, this evens out, but she does deal more damage to champions. Her empowered Q will now stun monsters and her ultimate will no longer be placed on cooldown if she attacks an enemy ward or trap. That final change is a solid quality of life adjustment while the changes to her Q are objectively a buff. In no situation is she weaker than before and being able to stun minions should help her during her jungle clears. The buffs are not done yet as we have another one coming up for Master Yi. His basic attack range will be increased by 50 while his Q and W are up for some massive changes. With his Q, you'll be able to decide which side of your target you appear on after the ability finishes. His W's cooldown is being reduced immensely from 28 to 9 seconds. The mana cost is being increased to 40 plus 6% of his max mana per second, but the ability will take on a completely new identity. This is because during the first half second of the cast, the damage reduction will be 90% and the damage reduction will also linger for half a second after he cancels the cast. In other words, it'll be much more rewarding than before for timing the ability well. Oddly enough, Riot is adding some skill expression to the character and also giving players more options to try and outplay their opponents with. The Q buff will have a larger impact against higher level opponents as it'll give Master Yi players opportunities to unironically outplay their opponents with positioning mix-ups. The final change we have is for Olaf. Overall, he's getting a buff. It'll be a nice buff followed by a couple of small nerfs. His passive bonus attack speed will be increased in the early game, but his health regen growth will be decreased and mana cost on Q increased. However, the attack speed adjustment is huge as it'll make his jungle cure much faster than before. That's it for the jungle, so let's go to our mid laners next. The very first change to cover in mid is Corky. While his E will receive an AD ratio buff, his ultimate's base damage and AP scaling are going to be reduced. As his ultimate is a solid poke tool and also contributes heavily to his damage output during fights, this is a bigger nerf than a buff after level 6. The nerf is likely aimed at competitive play, as his win rates in solo queue are rather lackluster, sitting around 48% in most elos. On the topic of competitive play, let me ask our question of the day. Are there any teams you're rooting for right now? I'm personally rooting for Cloud9. Seeing Sven in the support role excites me, and Jensen's return is something I've been asking for a long time. It's cool seeing them back, and it'd be great to see the team perform. But that's me, let me know your answers, and let's continue the video. Now for buffs, we'll begin with Galio. His Q's max HP base damage and AP ratio are both being increased. It's a straightforward buff that may help Galio pull towards the 50% win rate mark. 
At the end of the day, this buff is more effective against tankier enemies and while he'll still deal more damage to squishies, you'll notice this most when he's peeling for his teammates by trying to kill fighters and tanks. Finally, Vex is receiving buffs to her Q. The cooldown will be reduced and AP ratio increased. At the moment, she holds a high 48% win rate overall and with these buffs, she'll likely hit or get very close to 50%. As her Q's cooldown does scale to get pretty low, this buff will make her a much better teamfighter than ever before. With the support changes Riot wanted handled in the B patch, we'll wrap up the video with one more bottom lane change. This single change is gonna be for Sivir, but it's a huge one. First of all, she's receiving many base stat adjustments, which ultimately end up being a small nerf. Her passive is also being changed with the bonus movement speed increasing but now decaying over 1.5 seconds. What this does is it buffs attack speed builds, pushing players away from the popular lethality ones. Next is her Q, which will go out faster but come back slower. This makes it much more important than ever to try and land it at max range so enemies don't have as much time to react. Otherwise, players will need to move more effectively in order to hit closer foes in the middle of fights. Its base damage and scaling are being reduced as well as the cooldown increased. However, the cast time will now scale with attack speed all the way from 0.25 seconds to zero. Its mana cost will be reduced, but most importantly, this ability will scale with crit chance for up to 50% bonus damage. Again, this encourages standard marksman builds over lethality. Her W will provide bonus attack speed now and can bounce back to the same target. While it will prioritize a new target first, this change is huge as it can lead to some massive damage and high impact kills during important fights. The total AD ratio will be decreased, max bounces limited and many other minor changes to follow. Her E will no longer refund mana but instead heal her and also proc her passive, providing utility in other important ways. However, the cooldown will be increased ever so slightly. Finally, her ultimate will have its cooldown reduced, provide less utility for her teammates but give herself a bigger boost in power. The most important change is that she will reduce her ability cooldowns by half a second with her basic attacks while the effect is active. Its duration will also refresh on recent takedowns, giving her a chance to truly shine when she's ahead. Looks like Sivir is gonna be a lot of fun in this next patch, I can't wait to play her, but that covers all the upcoming changes for patch 12.13. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching and let us know what you think about them in the comments below and like always, feel free to expand the description if you'd like to join our discord. Until next time, take care everyone, good luck on the rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.